one second. Just one second here. That woman's name was Gabriella Anderson Scheiss. Let's just give me one second to turn this off here. Her name was Gabrielle Anderson Scheiss. Is anyone um, familiar with her? Does anyone know who she is? Does anyone remember her at all? Amen. I didn't either. I just came across this and it's such a blessing because when you are asking God truly to let you know what to minister on, let, let you know what he wants to get across, he always gives you proof of that and he always gives you resources. So this is the first time I have seen this video. Again, her name's Gabriella Anderson Scheiss and that was the last moments of the 1984 Summer Olympics Marathon, okay? That was um, in 1983, going back, just to give you a bit of history on her. Um, she won the inaugural California International Marathon. And in October of 83, she was then invited to the second annual Twin Cities Marathon where she set the course record. And of course she won the race, but she set a course record um, that had never been won before, of course. There were 7,500 runners, okay, in that race that she ran, and many of them struggled very, very badly. Many of them couldn't finish because the temperatures on that day in 1983 were warmer than usual, but she had absolutely no problem at all. She had no issue with this heat. She had no, it just seemed it, it did not affect her at all, and so she made it into the 1984 Olympics. Now the 1984 Olympics was the first time that there was a women's marathon, which is so shocking to me that is so contemporary, um, not for Kai and our, our younger <laughs> participants, but 1984 for most of us seems like it was very recent. And when you think it was the first time that a woman uh, or they had a women's um, competition, but it was this first women's marathon. And the temperatures in that place as well were extremely warm that day. There were five water stations allowed. Five water stations were, were regulation. They could not have any more. And they were, they were situated um, along that course. Well, Gabriella missed that last water station and she became dehydrated. And her body started twisting, as you saw, and it contorted and her arm became stiff and her leg became stiff and she started dragging it behind her. Um, you saw at one point the doctors tried to get to her, but she knew that if the doctors put their hands on her, she would be disqualified and she needed to finish that race. No matter what she did, she wanted to finish that race. And so she wouldn't let them touch her, but they stood very close by. Um, in order to get to her and you saw them get to her right there at the end. Her legs seized up to the point where you saw it was just dragging behind her, but she was determined to make it. And she ended up finishing 37th out of 44. So I couldn't help but look at the symbolism when I saw this. I couldn't believe that, I, I, I don't know why I find God so unbelievable all the time, but he just amazes me and I love it. I couldn't believe that after all of this time, I saw this video this week when we needed to hear what we needed to hear. So I looked at the symbolism in this. And so once again, here we are another week looking at a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Now, what do I mean by that? Three weeks ago, we talked about the lampstand and that oil that was in the lampstand, right? That oil was representative of the Holy Spirit. Two weeks ago, Prophetess Deborah spoke to us about the oil and the virgin's lamps, right? Again, Holy Spirit. She said, do you have enough stored up? Last week, we heard Reverend Guevara, who ministered about the water that was drawn, by, drawn out of the well by Rebecca. And again, symbol of the Holy Spirit, the water and the oil, symbol of the Holy Spirit. So now do we remember that these symbols are oil and water and that's the Holy Spirit. Here I am seeing this video this week that again, I've never seen before, never heard of this woman. And I probably should have heard of her before, but I never did. I just, I never knew who she was. And we see her struggling and contorting and her body seizing in an almost paralytic state in some points because she didn't have what? Enough water. 
because she didn't have enough water. Now, again, we saw a real situation, but I'm looking at the symbolism in it. She's seizing and she's contorting and she's kind of stumbling her way through, dragging as a, all of her weight because she didn't have enough water. Amen. It's a visual of what we are, of who we are, that we can stumble our way through the marathon, the marathon of life, right? We can stumble our way through, but we stumble our way through like that when we don't have the water, when we don't have the Holy Spirit. We can seize up, we can pull our way through, we can force our way through, try our best to finish that race. But without the Holy Spirit, it's very, very difficult. It's very, very challenging, even when we don't realize it. Amen? Like our second worship song said, we're just actors on a stage, if you listen to those, those lyrics. We're just actors on a stage, like a child who's lost his way wouldn't be here today without him. Amen? We just be going through the motions. We need the Holy Spirit. If we don't have him, amen, that third person of the Trinity, that third person of the triune Godhead, we're operating totally on our own resources, resources which are limited. Amen. Our own resources are quite limited. God gave us brains, right? He gave us physical movement. He gave us all of these things, but in itself, it's quite limited. I heard years and years ago, and this probably was around, no, it wasn't around 84, it's probably around 87. I was listening to a message with my dad and someone said, I can't remember who this preacher was, but he said, without God, without the Holy Spirit, we couldn't catch our own breath in a fast car or with a fast car. We just can't do it. We need God to do that for us. Amen. Our own resources are limited. They are, they're limited. So the Holy Spirit is there to lead us. He's there to guide us. He's there to direct us. He's there to teach us. Amen. We don't have to go through life stumbling. We don't have to go through life contorted. We don't have to go through life struggling and dragging our legs behind us and our limbs feeling, and again, symbolic, feeling like they are, 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 are um, twisted and, and hard and, and, and more weight than we can bear. We don't have to stumble our way through life. Amen. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's so many of us that still choose to. There's many of us that know the word and we still make the conscious decision to stumble our way through. When we know the word and we know God and we know that he's there for us and we know that the Holy Spirit is there to comfort us, to lead us, to teach us. We know these things, but we choose to stumble our way through. And then we have those people that don't know God, amen? They've never, ever known that we don't have to live like this, that they don't have to live like that. Without the Holy Spirit, we have no comforter. We have no conscience without the Holy Spirit. We have no intercessor without the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't be able to understand scripture without the Holy Spirit. Again, I go back to my dad's words all the time and I just praise God for him and I praise God for his life and I praise God um, how he lived his life as a pastor, amen? And he used to say that the Bible is a code book. He said, the Bible is written in code and without the Holy Spirit, we can't break that code, amen? They're just like, again, that song said, we're just actors on a stage. The Bible is just a book of words. That's all it is. It, there are people who read it and they have no Holy Spirit and they try to interpret it. They don't know what it says. They don't understand what it says. We must have the Holy Spirit to be able to interpret that for us or else it's just like a textbook. Amen. Just like another novel, a cheesy novel that we may read. Without the Holy Spirit, we'd have no peace of mind whatsoever. We'd have no sense of, of clarity. We'd have nothing but confusion without the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'd be worn out in our minds all the time without the Holy Spirit. And, and I've seen people like that. I've heard of people like that. When you've heard of those people that just say, I'm just tired. I'm just exhausted. I'm just worn because you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to fill you up. Amen. He's there and he wants to do that. We'd just be going through the motions without the Holy Spirit. Again, just actors on a stage. I want you to really hear that this evening, that we're just actors on a stage without him. 
Pope Francis said something last year that I really, really liked. He said in one of his homilies, he said, a Christian life that does not leave room for the Holy Spirit and does not allow the spirit to go forward is a pagan life dressed up as a Christian one. I thought that was so profound the way he said that. It's just a pagan life dressed up like a Christian one. He went on to say that the spirit is the protagonist of Christian life. It's the spirit that is in us, that accompanies us, that transforms us, and that is triumphant in us. I love the way he said that. That brings even more clarity, right? It's, it's, it's not like it's something that's so profound, but he said it in a way that makes it profound when you apply it to sometimes our own lives and, and, and to lives of, lives of those to some, of some people that we know, right? All of us know people or have heard of people or have seen news stories or whatever it is of people who claim Christianity and we know they're not. We know they're not, but they really believe they are. But it says right here that it's just a pagan life dressed up like a Christian life if we're not led by the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the active agent of the Godhead. Amen. It's that active make that active agent. He carries out the acts of God. We're nothing without the Holy Spirit. Uh, again, uh, Sister Jacqueline, you won't see her, but you'll hear her um, as she reads the scriptures. Um, can you read Genesis 1, 26 and 27, and then go ahead and jump to Genesis 2, 7 at the same time. And God said, let us make man in our image as our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he, him, male and female created he. Amen. That was one twenty six and 27. It's now two and seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Amen. So what was happening here is in Genesis, we see he created man and woman. It said man and woman created he them. Then when you jump down to that 2-7, and I think, let me just, um, there's one part in there that I want to take a look at. Um, he, he became a living being. Um, he, in six, up the, if you go just the verse before it, it says just before that, and there was no man to till the land. Amen. There was no man to till the land. So in 126, 27, he made man and woman. He said that, right? We read that right. Everybody got that? But then later on in 2.6, he said, but there was no man to till the land. Now, how can that be? How can that be if he created them already? But now later on, there's no man to till the land. Because then we read that he blew his breath into them. Amen. After that. So until he blew his breath of life, it says, right? There was no man. They were just beings. They were just kind of there existing right but just there no life in them until he blew his breath of life his breath of life is the spirit amen his breath of life in the hebrew is uh, nishmat chayim is what it's called we call it in english the ruach breath the ruach breath of life or the ruach the holy spirit until he blew his ruach until he blew his uh, nishmat chayim into him there was no man. He didn't become a living being until that, that moment. The breath of life, the Ruach breath, the, the Nishim, uh, Nish, I'm sorry, Nish, Nishma Chayim is the He. If you look at the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, it's a He. And that's what that is. It's the breath, the He. All right. The breath that he blew into him. Um, Sister Jacqueline, can you read Genesis 17, 5 and then 17, 15? Gen for those who are taking notes, Genesis 17, 5 and then Genesis 17, 15. Neither shall thy, the name anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. 
And God said unto Abraham, And for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Amen. So what he did there with Abram and Sarai, he gave them the heh. Mm -hmm. They were just beings. Man and woman created he them. They were created by God, but he gave them the heh. Abraham, Sarah, he gave them the spirit, hallelujah, at that moment, he gave them the spirit, his breath of life, he gave them his Holy Spirit, the breath, amen, the he, I just love that, without the spirit, again, please get this, we're just actors on the stage, Abram and Sarai were just actors on the stage until he gave them the, the Ruach breath of life, the Holy Spirit. God gives testimony of the work and the need of the Holy Spirit throughout his word, but we'll just look at one example in Zechariah 4 and 6. Zechariah 4 and 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. By my what? Mm. Would she stop doing that? Uh oh, <laughs> by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. By my spirit, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, is what it says there. Now, the funny thing or interesting thing or, you know, God thing in it is that he says, the Lord of hosts, said the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts is the Lord of armies. He's the God of armies. Now, how interesting is it that the God of armies says not by power, not by might. When we think of the army, isn't that what we think of exactly? Power and might and strength, right? But he says not by power, not by might, but by my what? Spirit. By my spirit, says the Lord. It has nothing to do with our individual resources. It has nothing to do with our individual strength. We can lift weights until Jesus comes back. And if we don't have the spirit of the Lord, we still got nothing. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit again to lead us, to guide us and to direct us through life. We need the Holy Spirit to be real Christians. That's why you can see when, and I'm going to be very bold here. You can see people who say that they're Christians. And they can sit there and have people praying over them and laying hands on them and everything else. But you know the tree by the fruit it bears. You know that. And if we've got the spirit of discernment in us and we've got the Holy Spirit in us, we can see right through that. If you've got someone who is spewing hate all the time, who's talking ugly all the time, who's not doing for the least of God's people, and they stand there and say they're a Christian, you know that they're not because they're not operating under the power of the Holy Spirit. They're not operating under the, under the authority of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is our conscience. He lets us know that right from wrong, amen? I get so offended when I see people who say they're Christians, but their actions, their words, their attitudes don't line up. That doesn't mean that we're not gonna have a bad day sometimes, <laughs> right? Sometimes we have a bad time. Sometimes we have a bad day and we may not be, you know, our best self. I, I remember one time um, I, this was, let me see, it was probably, well, this was 2020. This was 15 years ago. And I was having that bad day. Okay. Um, I was teaching high school and for whatever reason, all of my children chose to do whatever it was they wanted to do that day. Um, there was a neighbor who had moved. I had a new neighbor who moved next to me. And I just kept saying all day, I just want to get home. I just want to get home. I just want to get home. Well, I got home and the neighbor that moved next to me kept parking her car right next to my car, you know, just very, very close. And, and this is silly. It's going to sound crazy, but she kept taking my parking spot on top of it. <laughs> And it was, you know, she just didn't know that we didn't have assigned spots, but it was kind of like your seats in the classroom when you're growing up, you just kind of get your own spot and everybody knows that's your space, right? And sometimes people are like that in church. 
I've had times that I've walked into a church um, before I was ministering and I walk in, somebody's in my spot. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. <laughs> this is my space. So anyway, she had pulled up and I was already not in the best mood. And so um, I pulled up closer to her even than she was to me. And it was absolutely unreasonable how close I pulled up to her. And I did it very intentionally, right? Because I'm in a bad mood at this point. So when she saw me pull up, she comes running out of the house and she said, you parked kind of close to my car. And I said, it's in between the lines. And I went in my house, right? I, I mean, I snapped. I said it just like it's in between the lines. And I went into the house. The minute I closed the door, I got the biggest check. And the Lord said, now you go right back out there and apologize. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even do anything. She's been doing this for weeks since she's been here. I had a bad day at work and now I have to go apologize. I, I have to be chastised for this. Now, this is what I'm thinking. Of course, I'm not talking back like that to the Lord, right? So I had written, I think I had two books. I think there were just two. Maybe I had my third book. I think there were just two books I had out by then. And so that was the closest thing I could grab. I had some extra copies. So I grabbed one of the books and I ran and knocked on her door and she peeked out the window, you know, like she was scared. Now I'm 4'11", right? So there's really no <laughs> way to be scared, but you know, you well, grenades are small too. So you never know, I suppose. So she peeks out the window and I said, don't worry. I said, I come in peace. I come in peace, <laughs> said it like that. And so, no, I didn't. I said, I come bearing gifts. That's what I said. And so she opened the door and I gave her the book and I said, you know, I said, listen, I said, I'm a Christian and I should not have behaved like that. I'm so sorry. And I moved the car. And at that point we were fast friends. Um, she, she was quite a bit younger than me. Um, she had two little girls. And at that point I could never go in my house without the little girls running to the door and they would want to come over. And I got to the point I had movies tells you how how long ago it was because we still had blockbuster so i got um dvds i would keep dvds there for them and popcorn and lemonade and um they would always come over after that and there the young lady that i'm speaking of just found me on facebook about two months ago and wrote me the most beautiful note and sent me um, pictures of the girls who are i mean they're grown now i can't even believe it but we wouldn't have forged this relationship and wouldn't have had a good neighborly relationship if I had stayed as ugly as I was and if the Holy Spirit had not completely put a check mark on my heart at that moment. And so I would not have had that if I didn't have the Holy Spirit in, inside activated. Amen. Or if I did not listen to that Holy Spirit, if I didn't pay attention to that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give us a check mark, which is a good thing because otherwise we'll go astray. We can very easily go to the left, easily go to the right, not stay on that straight and narrow path that he has for us without the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need to have him because there are certain things that come with operating in the Holy Spirit. Can you read Isaiah 11, 2 and 3? Isaiah 11, 2 and 3. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Amen. So that details, that passage details the gifts that come with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you didn't catch it and you're taking notes, wisdom was the first one. Wisdom comes with the Holy Spirit. Life begins to take on a deeper meaning when you have wisdom. Amen. It's about the perfection of faith. That's what wisdom is. It's perfecting our faith. Life is deeper than it usually is. Okay. That's when you begin to know that you're maturing in the faith, that you're maturing in your mind. And it's not about an age. Amen. Because there are some people they can be 65, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old. And they still have no wisdom. But there can be someone who's 10, 11 or 12 who you just wonder, where did this child come from? Because they're so wise. Well, they're operating in something else. They're operating on a le another level. The second thing after wisdom was understanding. Understanding comes with the Holy Spirit. 
we're not confused about the right way to live. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. And sometimes, even though, you know, you can tell a, a, a two-year-old, don't touch the cookies on the counter. And then they go touch them anyway. And then they go eat them and they've got crumbs all around their face and say, I didn't eat them. I didn't touch them. Well, they say, I didn't eat them. I didn't touch them because they know they did wrong and they know that they may be in trouble, right? A two-year-old knows right from wrong, but somehow as we get older, some of those lines get very blurred and they get very blurred because there's some things that are acceptable in society, in this world that are still not acceptable for us, but they're legal, right? They're not illegal. They're acceptable. That doesn't mean that they're right. And that doesn't mean that we should be doing those things. That doesn't mean that we should partake in those things. The Lord God said that we live in this world, but we're not of this world. So the Holy Spirit gives us understanding about what's right and what's wrong and what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. The third piece is counsel. The Holy Spirit gives us counsel. Amen. We know that, again, we know that difference between right and wrong. That couples, that's coupled with knowing the right way to live, okay? We know the difference between right and wrong because he gives us proper counsel, amen? And he'll always answer us. If there's something we're not sure about, he will answer us, amen? Just as sure as I'm sitting here, if we listen, but we have to get to that place where we're having a dialogue with the Lord and not just a monologue. Sometimes we get on our knees, we say what we have to say and we get up. Prayer is a dialogue. Worship is, is, uh, um, goes both ways. Amen. We give to God and then he gives to us. Amen. And it comes through the aid of that Holy Spirit. The fourth thing is fortitude. We have fortitude. That's another gift that was detailed right there in Isaiah 11. We have fortitude. That means that we take risks. Amen. Because faith is a risk, isn't it? Having faith is a risk. When you step out on faith and you don't know what's, the, what's in front of you, you don't know what's on the side, but you take that step anyway, just trusting God, that's fortitude. So we take these risks. We don't give up. The word of God tells us, grow not weary from well-doing. It doesn't mean that sometimes we won't get um, tired a little bit. We do get tired. We get physically tired. We're in the flesh, right? But we don't grow weary. We don't get to the point where we're done and we don't turn, we refuse to keep going forward and we turn around. That's getting weary where we say, I'm done, we're go I'm going back. Now, I've had, I've had times, I've told my, I just recently told my husband about this again, I know. And I do remember telling someone, else, I think it was Sister Jacqueline, I was telling that there was a time that I was really going through it. And I was in the second year, I think, of really going through. And I just felt like I've had enough. I can't do anymore. This is it. I'm done. And it's like, God, where are you? I don't hear you. You're not responding. When the truth of the matter was, I was not listening. I was listening for an answer I wanted to hear. I was not listening to the answer he had for me. And so I said, I'm done. That's it. And I was kind of having a tantrum. And I said, I'm, it was Saturday evening. And I said, I'm not going to church in the morning. I'm absolutely done with this. I'm not having it anymore. It's easier to just live my life, not as a Christian, if I've got to deal with this and blah, 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 blah. And you're not going to say anything. It wasn't five minutes after that rant. I got a call. And actually, now that you know her, the call was from Sister Deborah or from Prophetess Deborah. She was Sister Deborah then from Prophetess Deborah. And she says, hey there. She said, I need a ride to church in the morning. <laughs> And you know, I didn't tell her, I'm not going to church in the morning. I'm done. I'm through. I said, okay, I'll be there at 1030. <laughs> and that was it. That was my rant. And so I was tired for a minute. And that doesn't mean God appreciated that rant. That's not something I would do now because I, you know, think about Job when he got that good telling off. I never want anything like that. But there was, I wasn't weary because it was like, you know, I'm saying what I'm done with my mouth, but I know Good and well, for sure. I'll never be done with God. I love him too much because he loves me too much. And that was the Holy Spirit operating in me once I let him operate in me that said, okay, I'll be there at 1030. That's the Holy Spirit. Because if I was in my own resources, if I was in my flesh, I wouldn't have done it. 
I would have probably made up some lie or something like that to say why I couldn't be there because that's what the flesh does. That's what our own resources, when we rely on those, that's what happens. But the Holy Spirit doesn't let us do that. We stand up for what's right, even when it's unpopular. That's fortitude. We stand up for the right thing. We don't just go with the crowd. It can be a very unpopular opinion, but it doesn't matter to us because we know we have the backing of the Holy Spirit. We know that the Lord God has that angel encamped about us. Amen? Amen. When we allow the Holy Spirit to operate. The next um, gift is knowledge. This is a lot that was in those two little verses, isn't it? That's how God is. Amen? Knowledge is the next thing. We understand the meaning of God. We understand the meaning of God. That is a mouthful. When we can articulate who God is. Amen. And I want us to think about that. Who is God? Who is God to you? Who has he been to you? Amen. We have that knowledge. That's how we're able to disciple. Because how can we win someone over to Christ if we can't articulate who he is to us ourselves? Amen. And then the last thing we have is the fear of the Lord. And in some um, older texts, you'll see it um, written as piety, as piety. If you go back to the old Latin Vulgate, it's piety is how it's interpreted. But we have that, that fear of the Lord. And fear of the Lord does not mean terror, right, as we know it today. It's a very, very healthy, very, very strong respect that we have for the Lord. We know who he is. We know what he is. We understand his awesomeness to, de to the degree that we don't say that anything else is awesome because it, com it can't compare to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. We don't throw those kind of words around lightly <coughs> and without regard. We know that he's awesome. We respect him for all that he is and all that he's proven to us that he is throughout our lives. When we have the fear of the Lord or the piety, we don't want to be common with him. Amen. We don't want to just, you know, we, like he's just somebody off the street, right? We don't, we don't behave that way because we have reverence for him. That's what that fear and piety is. We lift him up. We acknowledge him. We hallow him. Amen. As we say in that, what we call the Lord's prayer. Amen. We know that he's all knowing. We know that he's all powerful. We know that he's almighty. That's the fear of the Lord. That's the piety. We lift him up and we revere him for all that he is. So we need the Holy Spirit. Those are the gifts that we get from the Holy Spirit when we're allowing him to operate. So how do we get the Holy Spirit? How do we get it? Is it something we can buy? Can we go purchase the Holy Spirit? Nah, we can't do that, right? We can't go just, you know, buy a Bible and the Holy Spirit's there because again, we need the Holy Spirit to even interpret that, right? So when we said yes to the Lord, the Holy Spirit took up residence inside of us. It's a free gift that's given by God. As soon as we said yes, he started collecting his things and moved on in. Amen. <laughs> he moved inside of us. Once we were saved, as soon as we said, yes, that's a free gift of God. Can you read John 14, 16, and 17, please? John 14, 16, and 17 for those. Okay, things. I don't think I got that one, but just a moment. Oh, you know what? It's okay if you don't have it. You can, you can reference that later on, John 14, 16, and 17. It just tells us that he dwells with us. Amen. That's what it says. He dwells with us and he will be in us. Okay. Amen. And you're right, Sister Jacqueline. I did not have that room written down for you. I just had it. It, it was a side note that I had. <laughs> I, well, I have it if you want me to read it. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm sorry, John 14, 15. Uh, 16 through 17. 16 through 17. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because he seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Amen. He dwells with you, and he'll be in you. It tells us that right there. Amen. 
in 1 Corinthians 3.16, he says that we're temples of God and the spirit of God dwells in us. We're temples of God and the spirit of God dwells in us. He's in us. Another example is 2 Timothy 1.14, where he says to keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. And one more for you is Romans 8.11, where he says, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So once we say yes, the Holy Spirit is in us. The spirit is in us. Each of us on this line right now, on this, this meeting right now, are saved. So he's in us. But he's as good for us as an unplugged lamp in a dark room if we don't utilize all that he has for us. Amen? Yeah. Think about us being the lamp. We're that lamp, right? Mm -hmm. And we're sitting there with an unplugged, uh, with an unplugged cord. We have to plug it into the outlet. We need to plug ourselves into the outlet. That's what we have to do because he's in us. He dwells in us. He lives in us. But we need to now utilize him. Amen. We have to make use of this, the spirit that God has given us. Now look at Acts 1 and 8. Acts 1 and 8. Okay. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, in, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost art of the earth. Amen. Come where? Where did it say toward the beginning? It shall come uh, upon you. Upon. So all the other verses we talked about in. He's okay. in us. He's in us. Here we talk about upon. That's something different, isn't it? Yes. Upon. He comes upon us. So we've got to plug into that outlet for him to come upon us. Now, we've had a lot of scripture and a lot for this evening. And so I'm going to continue this next week. And we're going to talk about the spirit coming upon us. We're, talk, we're going to talk about um, how we can tap into the power of the Holy Spirit and go to those different levels. Amen. Those new levels. Amen. Because there's a lot of scripture that we have that we can review <laughs> during the week. Now, I just want to ask if you can unmute yourselves. I said, who is God to you? Who is God? That's part of that knowledge we talked about. Does anyone want to answer? Anyone want to answer? Who is God? Can you articulate that? Because again, if we're to be disciples and go make disciples, we're disciples of Christ and we're to go out and make disciples. We need to be able to articulate who God is. So who is God to you? Anybody can jump in at any time. He is my creator and... Um... <laughs> My provider. <laughs> Amen. 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 Protector. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. He's all those things. Anyone else? I would have said my first word would have been creator. Okay. Amen. Uh, uh, because I just live in a beautiful spot. And I think if you're trying to get tell people about Jesus, if you say, well, start off with creation, that can sometimes be a good point and then go on to other things. Yeah. Amen. Your Praise God. He's a creator. And, and I can attest to what she was just saying because I was on a workshop last week um, out of Wales. And that's what the whole thing was about, was about creation and how beautiful it was there. And they talked about the greenery and, you know, there's no way you can just consider that there is no God by looking at creation. You know, there's God, you know, he's there. Amen. Amen. Great. Anyone else? Amen. God is my rock. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. He's a rock. Amen. My confidant. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. Anyone else? God is our shepherd. It's our shepherd. Amen. Amen. Does anyone else want to speak? It's an old word, but it's refuge. Refuge. Yes. Yes. A place of shelter, a place of safety. Amen. Anyone else? He's your best friend, too. Yeah. That's hey, right. Amen. <laughs> amen. Do you see how 
And those watching on Facebook even uh, think about this as well. Everyone who's answered, we all answered these things with smiles on our face. I, I preached this whole, mis- <laughs> this whole message with a smile on our face. So he's our joy. Yeah. And then people keep talking about 2020. I said this, I think, last week or week before last. 2020 needs to be over, blah, 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 blah. Here we all are smiling right? <laughs> Some crazy things happening this year. Here we all are smiling because why? Because he's our joy. Yeah. Amen. He's yeah. our joy in the time of sorrow in the time of, of tears in the time of darkness. He's our joy. So that's how we can disciple. That's how we can go and make disciples. If we just say those things, we do not have to go to people with the these and the thuses and the thous, right? I love God because he's my joy, because he's my creator, because he's my all in all, because he's my refuge, because he's my counselor, because he's my best friend, because he's my rock. He's all of those things. Amen. 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 So, Father God, we just thank you right now, Lord, that you're all of these things and so much more to all of us, Heavenly Father. If we had all the time in the world, if we were here until you come back, Lord, I'm sure we could still think of more adjectives, Heavenly Father, to call you, Heavenly Father. We have more descriptive language, Heavenly Father, that we can say that you are to us, Heavenly Father, because you are that awesome, Lord God, because you are our all in all, our everything, Heavenly Father. You are, Lord. God, you are Lord Jesus. And we acknowledge you right now, Father God. We tell you right now how much we love you, how much we adore you, how we cannot live without you and don't want to live without you, Lord, because you are everything to us. We thank you for the free pardon of our sins. We thank you, Lord God, that we have eternal life in you. We thank you that you're the one that forgives us and separates our sin as far as the East is from the West. And we thank you tonight, Lord God, for the example that you've given us, Heavenly Father, of what we could look like, Lord God, without the water, Heavenly Father, without the Holy Spirit, Lord God, leading us and guiding us and directing us, Heavenly Father. We ask you, Lord, to continue to anoint this word, Heavenly Father. Give it to each of us, Heavenly Father, and customize it for each of us, Lord, where we can better apply it to our own lives, Lord, and we can go out, Heavenly Father, and translate it for others so that they too can apply it to theirs, Lord Jesus. We thank you in advance for next week's word, Heavenly Father, where we'll continue to talk about the act of of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you give us that option, Heavenly Father, to let him rest upon us, Lord God, to do things, Heavenly Father, that we never thought we could do and do things that we never could do in our own power and our own authority, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We thank you right now, Heavenly Father, as we prepare to go into communion, We're going to change things just a little bit because we know your spirit is here and we want to continue with communion now in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh Uh-oh. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) Kai is going to give us a selection. You're still on mute, Kai, as well. You're still muted, Kai. Oh, sorry. Like it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. I have to find what this looks like. Amen. <laughs> if we take this time now, we've got our um, our items for communion. If we take this time while Kai is giving the selection to just think about even the more what God is for us and what God is to us. Amen. And the word of God says, let a man examine himself because he who eats and drinks unworthy eats and drinks damnation to himself. So just examine yourself. Amen. If there's anything that God can't use in us, ask him to throw it out. Amen. And ask him to multiply those things in us that he can use so that our purpose in him and in this world that he has us in can be fulfilled. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
Your voice it thunders The oak starts twisting The forest sounds with cedars breaking The waters see you And start their riding From the depths a song is rising now it's rising from the ground holy 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 lord the earth is yours and singing holy 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 Your voice is thunders, the ground is shaking, the my mountains now are trembling. Creation sees you and starts composing, the fields and trees they start rejoicing. Now, it's rising from the ground. Now it's rising from the ground. Hear us crying out. Hear us crying out. Holy, 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 holy Lord. The earth is yours and singing holy, 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 holy Lord. The earth is yours and singing holy, 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 holy Lord. The earth is yours and singing holy, 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 holy Lord. The earth is yours. The earth is yours. The earth is yours. Amen. 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 So now as we go into to our time of communion, I'm going to ask if anyone has any prayer requests. Yeah. Did someone say yes? Okay, I thought I heard someone say yes. Okay, any prayer requests? Amen. All right. Amen. So we have um, a request for um, two couples today. And so we're going to pray for marriage. We're going to pray for relationships. Amen. We're going to ask that God be fruitful in all of these and that he provide his guiding, his guidance. Amen. His wisdom to, to relationships tonight. Amen. So if you can have anyone that you can think of that that needs a blessing over their relationship, strengthen their marriage, whatever it is, we're just going to lift them up tonight. Amen. And then um, we have Catherine Pitts, who is in need of a healing tonight. Um, Anthony Collins, we're playing, praying for guidance and strength. Um, our little Trinity asked to pray for her friends, Eliana, Abigail, Liam, and Dylan. Dylan. Amen. And then I'm going to say something too, because she asked, she loves, I don't know if anyone's heard of this person, but there's this girl named Jojo Siwa and she is this, this, um, well, she was a dancer and now she's doing other stuff that the kids absolutely love. And when she said it, I said, oh, Trinity. And then I got another check mark because. <laughs> 
for her, she's important to her. Amen. And she does need prayer, whether she'll ever meet her or not. And my grandma, my grandma Timor prayed for people that she knew she would never, ever meet. She was notorious for praying for famous people. And it seemed kind of funny to us when we were little, but they need prayer too. Amen. They definitely need prayer. So we're going to also pray for Joe, Joe, because that's what Trinity asked. <laughs> Amen. 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 And then um, I also have a, a prayer request. Um, one of my former students who is actually closer to me than, than a student, she's one of ones that I call my baby girls. Um, she has a friend of hers who lost everything two nights ago in a fire. And she's got a nine month old boy, a three year old boy, a five year old girl, a 10 year old girl and an 11 year old boy. And they have nothing at this point. So anything we take, I'm going to wait till after service for communion. I'm sorry, for um, offering. Anything we take in this evening is going to go to them. Amen. Um, we could send them things. If anyone is in the um, Metro Detroit area, I can give you information if you want to have her pick things up or anything like that, but it's not really reasonable for the rest of us to be able to get there. So any offering we take in tonight, I'm, I asked for her cash app, so I'm going to cash app it to her um, as soon as we're done. Um, and, and I love this, that we can help everywhere. Amen. We can with cash app and PayPal and all these things, we can really help people. And this is what being a missionary church is about. Amen. And using technology the right way. Amen. So we're going to get that to them. Amen. And so um, we're asking the Lord again to just put his hand on relationships, ask him for those who need a healing to heal in the name of Jesus. Those um, individuals that we spoke of, our friends, our family, like Trinity led the way, talking about her friends. We ask that God bless our friends tonight. Amen. Those people that need a healing that we will never know, that we'll never be able to get to. We ask God to meet them at the point of our their needs and give them everything they need. And we ask for the woman um, and her family who's lost everything, that they be restored, that the Lord promised in his word that he would restore what the canker worm and the locust have eaten. So we ask that they be restored and made whole in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And tonight as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are bringing a closure to living without the Holy Spirit activated in our lives. Amen. We will no longer stumble through we will no longer be paralytic as we go through this life. We will no longer have limbs that seize in Jesus' name, but we will go through full of all of the water and then the Holy Spirit that we need to get through everything we need to get through. We speak clarity. We speak peace. We speak understanding. We speak wisdom. We speak counsel. We speak fortitude and we speak piety or the fear of the Lord. And we bring closure to any of those areas in our life where these were not being utilized tonight and always in Jesus name. And the word of God said that they ate together and they drank together. Amen. 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 And we thank God that everyone here is saved. If there's anyone watching on Facebook that's not, please join us here um, or message any of us and we can walk you through that sinner's prayer and you can be saved tonight. Amen. You don't have to wait. Amen. If you'd like to join us for service, please just log on to www dltmoreministries.com and join us on this end. Amen. But we'll always be there on that end on Facebook as well. Now I want to open it up to any testimonies, anything anybody would like to share, um, any questions you may have about the message, anything else that you have on your heart? Anyone? Well, I'd just like to say thank you. It was excellent. I really mm. enjoyed it and just found it so um, encouraging, really. Mm. Because if I'm going to be really honest, I kind of had a little bit of a block with the Holy Spirit. Mm. It's really mm. tricky thinking, gosh, if I let this Holy Spirit in, what's going to happen? Am I going to change into a completely different person? And just in this last couple of weeks, I think I've been able to let the Holy Spirit in through thinking, um, like, I need peace. And so, Holy Spirit, he can give you peace. So I've let the Holy Spirit come in and give me peace. And it's been brilliant to be Sue with peace instead of yeah. Sue with anxiety. And it's like, I'm the same person, but I've got the peace. And it's it really nice to have 
all um, sort of uh, organized, really. Yeah, and just sort of confirmed through what you were saying. So thank you. Praise God. Praise yeah. God. Amen. That's good news. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Well, I have a testimony tonight. Um, the those of us or there are many of us who know um, some of you don't know that we took on a project as a group to get an RV to a family who needed it in um, Oregon. Okay, and so it was um, our RV, mine and Demont's, and um, we saw we knew the need, and so the rest of the people collectively in our um, in our group here got together and did everything that needed to be done to get this RV to Oregon. Well, I got a message, Deacon DeMont, that was two days ago. Was it day before yesterday? Day before mm -hmm. yesterday from the young lady's mother. And she said that um, she, her daughter showed her a letter from the um, Child Protective Services or Department of Human Services or something like that when the baby was born. So those of you that don't know about the RV, not, we found out about this family that was going to be homeless in a matter of, of weeks. It was a couple of weeks we had left, or they had left. We say we had it left because we took the charge. And so, you know, if my brother's in trouble, so am I, right? Yeah. And so um, we took that charge and um, she ended up, she was very heavily pregnant and um, she delivered the baby early. Her husband um, couldn't take off work. It was just a number of things that were going on, but they were just in very bad shape. And so the baby was born, which kind of bought them a few more days because they had extra time in the hospital before they were going to really be homeless. And the RV was there just in time. Well, she got a letter that um, she showed her mother that it come in during that time that we didn't know anything about. And D, um, Department of Human Services or Social Services was going to take that baby. They were not going to let her leave the hospital with that child, she and her husband, because they knew that they had no place to be. We didn't even know that. And so she was saying that because they had the RV, the Department of Human Services said that they could keep the child because it did have, of course, running water and um, the room for the baby. So if they had not gotten that, besides them being homeless, which would have been enough, more than you know enough, the baby would have been taken away. So we are still getting blessed with good news um, as a result of, of what we took on. Amen. We stumbled into a blessing and we're still hearing their testimonies. Amen. So I just want to make sure we keep opening our hearts to people. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing what we can do where we are with what we've got. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Okay. Yes, Sister Jerry. Uh, well, I think we need to talk about how my son ran away and <laughs> um and he like ran away like to where they had helicopters and a whole search team out for him and he we couldn't find him until you prayed for him. I mean, I think that's something that needs to be said. Of course. Yeah. So. Now I'm going to get worked up. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. What happened? I wasn't going to say anything, of course, um, because I had, you know, you, you get people calling, you get emails, you get messages on Messenger and all that, and, and you're not at liberty to say anything right what someone shares with you you keep to yourself you and god amen mm -hmm. and so i um got the call and it was on my phone is typically on vibrate so i don't always get them but it was right next to me and it was um late at night and so i saw it light up which was a good thing and um jerry was you know flustered as you, and that's you know putting it lightly you don't know where your child is and it's you know getting close to the middle of the night right well, it was the middle of the night. It was past midnight, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, um, it was I think it was 1.13 here is what I looked at on the, on the clock. And so um, she was flustered and I said, okay, wait a second. I said, let's pray. Let's just start out by praying. And I was in the midst of working on this message. So I was in the midst of talking about, you know, writing about the Holy Spirit and the activation of the Holy Spirit. And that's what 
um, I, I asked the Lord, did you remember Sister Jerry when I said, Holy Spirit, help us pray? Because we don't even know what to pray because even though um, I'm a minister and have been a minister for two decades, I'm still a mom and you get flustered. I hear a mom saying, I don't know where my kid is and I'm frustrated, I'm flustered and I'm nervous for her. So that's why I said, Holy Spirit, help us pray because without the Holy Spirit, we don't even know what to pray. Amen. And so I started praying and in the middle of my prayer, the Lord said he's okay. And I didn't share that with her, but he said, he, he said he's okay. And that's when I, I said in my prayer, I remember one thing I said, I said, Lord, it doesn't matter that we don't know where he is. You know where he is. Um, go get him now or something like that. I don't remember exactly what I said, but when I, as soon as I finished, um, she says, hold on one second, I'm getting a call. And she said, they've got him. <laughs> they've got him. And he had been gone three hours at that time. Amen. Been gone so for so to... long. They had helicopters out. They had um, uh, search and rescue people out. Like he was gone. He was a goner. I was sure of it. Mm -hmm. And oh. I just wanted to share that because I am still just like, he's, he's doing a little bit better. He's sleeping a lot. Um, but he's doing a little bit better. And I'm still just like, I always believed in the power of prayer, but it wasn't until I met you guys where I really started to see it. I've Amen. just been like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like <laughs> Amen. 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 Um, one thing I will share since you um, were kind of open with this is that the Lord said to me afterward, and I, I shared this, I believe, didn't I say this to you, Deacon DeMond? Did I say about the karate kid? Did I say that to you? Yeah, it does sound crazy. But the Lord shows me things the way I understand them, right? And so Sister Jerry is in a new place, in a new state, um, and in a place that, you know, her children are getting used to, and they've only been there a split second. Um, what, a week and a half, right? About two weeks? Yeah, maybe two weeks. Maybe the two weeks. Yeah. And so it's a new place. And what the Lord showed me was Karate Kid. And I understood it immediately. Um, what he was saying, for those who know the movie Karate Kid, if you remember, we're back in 84 again. Wasn't that 1984 when that came out or something like oh, that? Man. Oh, God. Um, but he, the story was that he was a, a kid who was moving. To a new state he was from jersey and he was moving to la and when he got to la he just didn't settle in well and because it was a new place he, he told his mom i'm in a new place i don't understand it i don't get it here i just want to go back home and that's what he that's what the lord showed me that he was just going through some anxiety because he's in a new place that he's got to try to understand now um you build a place where you begin to you know be comfortable and now he's in this new place and he's just got to begin to understand it and get used to it. That's why he showed me Christ. <laughs> so that's what you know, works. Gonna continue to, I didn't hear you, Sister Jeannie. I'm sorry. Whatever works. Whatever works. Amen. Amen. So we're going to teach him how to <laughs> with that bird kick that he did and kick all that stuff out of the way. <laughs> And be happy. Amen. We're going to keep praying for him and keep him covered. Amen. And please let him know also, um, Sister Jacqueline's going to mention it, I know, in the announcement soon. But there's, um, well, it's a little bit old for him now, but there's a youth group that's starting, young adult group that's starting tomorrow. Um, he may want to just listen in on it because it may, be, may provide some clarity, but we're going to start the youth group for people his age in the next couple weeks. Amen. Okay. That could help. Amen. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to share? All right, with that, we're going to go into the announcements and then we're going to close out for the evening. Amen? Amen. Sister Jackson. Okay, hello, everybody. Um, with that, the announcements are short today. <laughs> I'm just going to refer you to um, the website for any updates or any um, events that are coming up. Um, one thing is uh, Mount Olive is now part of the Meetup group. So if you've heard of meetup.com, um, please go there and um, register and, and that's another resource for you to find out different things that are going on and, and also to see other communities that are coming and joining us as well. Um, I think that's all I have for today. 
Amen. So and the bridge does start tomorrow. For oh, young yes, yes. So if you know of anyone between the ages of 25 and 35, amen, the, it's called the bridge and it starts tomorrow at 4 p.m. and it will be led by TJ Thomas, who's a wonderful, wonderful young man. And they're starting the series adulting. Amen. Uh, we had a round table a couple a couple weeks ago and the young people told us what um, was most taxing to them, um, things that they really had questions about and they want to do it in Jesus's name. They just don't know how. So the series is called Adulting and they will talk about work and finance and all relationships, all of these different things. And the bridge is held every first Sunday of the month at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So anyone can jump on, same thing on the website, click the picture that corresponds with the group that you'd like to attend. Amen? Amen. Amen. Does anyone have anything else tonight? All hearts and minds are clear. Uh -huh. Go ahead, I'm sorry. What about mm -hmm. offertory of prayer? I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. Offertory prayer. I'm sorry. We'll do the go on after service and submit the offerings. Again, they're going to go to the young lady with the um, her family. But yes, um, thank you so much. Deacon Damascus going to pray over the offering in advance. Amen. Oh, okay. I got you. Okay. Holy Spirit, breathe into our lungs so that we may feel our peace with us. Holy Spirit, Breathe into the lives of those who people who are touched by the ministry and this church so that they too may feel the peace of the Holy Spirit. And I do an outpouring of generous gifts and offered unto you, Father God, in the name of the one who first offered the gifts in your, in your name, Father, and the Holy Spirit. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Does anyone have anything else tonight? Amen. Well, we will end here. Amen. Everyone be blessed. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Listen to the Holy Spirit throughout the week and watch how it just begins to change your life. And then next week, we'll talk more about plugging in. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And, all right, everyone, be blessed. Let's do our virtual. Bye, everyone. Hi. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Peace be with everyone on the line, and God bless each and every household represented in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. -bye. bye.